Hello my friends, Roger Mudfossil University, a very quickie today. I go over this many times, but uh, this is, I think I found something new today. This is what I see as an electron, and the electron is back to back like this, and it can separate like that through the Venturi. Photons are two electrons back to back. Protons are nothing more than a ton of electrons added together, 1837 of them, a neutron is like 1838, but they, you can call them whatever you want, but they're really only numbers that create stability, and those numbers are not every, every, at every 1837 there's another one, no, they're all over the ballpark, there's thousands of different isotopes, even hydrogen has, I think, nine isotopes, you know, hydrogen is not just one hydrogen, one, one ball like this, in the center and one little particle outside absolutely not there's all kinds of hydrogens and this is the thing that that has just been overlooked now and, and of course it's nothing's right and they now realize it and I've been going with electron flood theory for years now and I have evidence to prove what I'm saying so it's time they can look because now they know they're wrong at the same rate so in order to be absolutely sure we're going to have to analyze more data to get that final significance but the reason why this is so interesting and thrilling is that, besides being unexpected, this could genuinely be the first sight of something new. Because if, when we've analysed more data, this difference between muons and electrons stays and lepton universality seems to be violated, well, what that means is that there's something wrong with the standard model. That we found the crack, finally, in our understanding of particle physics. There's absolutely no way that we can explain this observation with our current understanding. Correct. There is no way, and they never could explain any of the isotopes they had. I don't know how they ever decided that these gigantic particles existed. All these are is particles made out of that. That's the only particle that exists in the universe that I can determine. Now, once they get into the atomic realm where the atoms are already built and they know like these, these certain zones of stability and how they can combine with each other, they, they're not too bad. But you get down into this realm, the electron realm, they have no clue whatsoever. And what they did at CERN was, in, it, to me, it was kind of crazy. They're, they're hitting things together like throwing mountains at each other and then digging through the debris of mountains. We're throwing a tiny little pebble at each other, then we're looking at how those things break. Because that's where they want to be, is exactly where we are. Everybody in physics is just too proud to step up. This is nothing more than pulsed red laser. That is an accelerated laser pulse. That is accelerated. Nobody can say it isn't. In the center is the particle that's creating this huge wave because it owns a huge region of magnetic influence around it. As it comes through here, everybody's got to get out of the way they're being concussed. Now it's been accelerated through a Venturi, and because it's being accelerated, it's been pulled out of the wave itself. Obviously stretched and it's sucked right out of there. That is the particle. Around that particle, though, it really wants to own huge, huge regions. Huge regions huge regions. Well, what happens? They can't all get through here at the same time, so they boil. And now I'm going to show you what happens to the boiling, because again, well, let's, let me just show you what the particle really looks like. After it comes out of here, this is called Cheryenkov radiation, and this is electron showers, neutrino showers. Neutrino electron showers, not muon showers, the big ones. This is from light. These are the tiniest particles, and they say, oh, we can't see them. Well, here they are right here. These are Higgs fields. These Higgs fields are magnetic fields that circle the spinning particle. The particle is here. Going, it's spinning like hell. And around it, it's, influence, it's influencing the little magnetic particles that are in the air everywhere, and they are setting up these little like plates, and they'll follow that disc, or that spit right out of there until it smashes into enough of these that it slows it down. And then they become just particles of heat. That's a new particle. Nobody's ever seen one of those before, except us. All right, that particle came through the accelerator backwards. If it appears to me, it could be antimatter, I don't know. But I can tell you what, that is smaller than light. 
it could be it could maybe it'll pop up to light i don't know but it's an interaction between that and another higgs field and you end up with that that to me is pretty damn interesting now here's the part that i'm talking about that's the light that's photon right, you see it you got you got the power part and then the carrier to me that's what it is power carrier power carrier back to back dipoles power carrier all right, now, what happens? When they hit each other, they're like hand grenades. Now, when it comes out through the accelerator, it's expanded. It's spinning to the right, means it will drift to the left as it goes. And you taking one shot of it, it's like a tube of light. And you can see it's expanded, it's compressed, obviously slowing down. Now, let's look at these particles. This is the killer. This is the one that's really got me flying today. Hold on. Now, don't forget, we saw those coming out like this. And I say they can do that. And they are doing it right here. And here's the key. This is the real killer. The black part. You got the black and then you got the power part. The power ones, they don't get along, man. These things are just boiling in there. They own huge reasons. The blacks seem to not own anything. They just, they'll just bump right into each other. And they are just perfect dots. They are those dots. Those aren't just splashes of blackness. Those are, every one of them is literally a dot on its own, which is these dots, but they don't own regions like these, the whites do. The whites come through here and they own huge regions and when they combine together, they just concuss like hell and they give off this white radiation. Now, that is a sort of, sort of a little bit of, of, of a mystery to me, but here's how I see it. You've got balls of, of, magnetism with a particle deep in the center so small it's it's just not even there really hardly but it is there there's a mass there but it's tiny it's like 0.0055 5485 atomic mass there's 1837 of them in one proton now they come through you got one ball here one ball here when they hit they they expand, you know they crush and you can feel they 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 get hard and they might pop this depends if they hit hard or pop. But whatever happens, they're squirting out energy out of them. That's the squirting. The blacks don't squirt. They just they just hang around the edges. They they won't go in here. None of them zero. Not not as bit of them in there. And here they are here. As soon as they get here, they say, "Whoa, get out of here! Just, get, get, just stay away. Don't get back." And that now come back in. Okay, come back in. We need to be attached. But coming through the accelerator, stay out of there. We only let the white guys through there. The black ones stay around, and they just chill out. They hang out. They could touch each other. They're just hanging around, having a good time. They'll reattach to the white ones, because the white ones cannot exist on their own, it looks like. They have to be attached like that for electricity. And that gives it like a polarity. Plus, minus, plus, minus, right down the line. And photons are like this back to back, and they have no real polarity because they are basically neutral. There's a they're they're, they're attached in such a way as not to create, you know, uh, you know like a bar magnet. Or, anyway, I think that we're seeing seeing separation of the polarities, right? Which is which is charge separation. Charge separation means that the particles open up and they turn into little bits and pieces like this. So if you shot in heavy hydrogens, and they get heavy, they get damn heavy, 100,000 particles, 200,000, 800,000 particles, compared to one. We're sending one. They're sending 800,000 to smash into debris. We're sending one in, and we're looking to see what it did. And we can see each one of them does something. It's not like there's one that's big, this big, and there's one that's this big, one over this big, one over this big. And occasionally, you may, if you look long enough, find one like this. But you would never know what it was because it's just in a mixed mist of debris. We know what they are because they started with almost it's the smallest particle exists. We, we did start with the smallest particle. It's light. And then when that light came through the accelerator, we could see all of this stuff. This is a, it's a new day, and it's time to stop and listen. Instead of dismissing every single thing. Very, very distressing. 
you know, I just had a physicist. Oh, there's, there's nothing here. I'd, be, I'd feel like a fool going to talk to anybody about this. And then just ran it down into the ground after that, how anybody could think that, you know, we could do anything like this. You know, well, I'm telling you something right now. CERN isn't even close to this. They're not even close to this. I'll make that statement again. CERN isn't even close to us. They're taking bombs and shooting them off together and then trying to fig dig through the absolute gigantic quantities of debris. And they're going to find all kinds of crazy things and nothing's going to make any sense to each other because there's huge and little bits and pieces and blah, 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 all kinds of things. We're seeing the same particles come out of the accelerator and then what do they do? And let me show you something that I just got the other day from Rod. Absolutely amazing. Rod took uh, these pictures, the, the um, light acceleration pictures, um, virtually all of the ones that I show. Absolutely stunning work he can do with this thing. Hold on. Okay, I'm going to show you this. It's as simple as this and it is elegantly simple. I will be showing you electrons. They are way down here, 0.000511 gigavolts, giga electron volts. Then you go into muons, which are gigantic compared to what I'm going to be showing you. Then you go into tau, which is like bazillion times what I'm showing you. They're hundreds of thousands of times bigger. And what happens is CERN is working with these. We're working with these hundreds of thousands of times smaller, but showing exactly what they look like. And CERN is working with this and getting debris that slaughters all everywhere. And then they dig through it and try to figure out something. And, and I can't figure out how they could possibly come up with anything of any consequence. Now, the reason that they realize that everything's wrong is because of leptons. They call it lepton universality, and it doesn't work. They just the, the, the weights of the particles do not work. And this I've known for a long time, but now they're, still, they're turning around and looking at it, just within the last couple of months. And uh, anyway, this is, talks all these little details about um, positrons and electrons, but I can just show you them. And my statement is that these are electrons. Or well, they're photons, really, but they're back to back. That's an electron, that's an electron. One's up and one's down. And that makes them into photons. And that's what I've been showing right along, is right here, these. They separate here. So we're showing particles at their extreme tiniest bits. Now don't forget, every single electron is 170, well, it's hundreds of thousands of times bigger than what we're working with. We're showing the same particle fields, we're showing the same look to them, because they all have, they're going to break down into chunks, but they're just gigantic chunks. And then they're smaller and bits and bits and smaller and smaller and smaller, and they may find one or two electrons in there, but you'd have to dig for months. With us, we just look at the things that came out, because they started out as electrons or light, which is photons, they came out, they looked to me, they plasmatized and came out as electrons and even that split in half. And that's called charge separation and that's what you have to have for fusion. If we had fusion there's a possibility that we could do something about our atmosphere, but without that we're screwed. All right, now don't forget, the things that CERN are working with are 170,000, and we're at 2.2. All right, that's size, electron volts, potential, whatever. And I'm saying right now, this is the particle we're dealing with, and we can split it in half, and I've shown that. Now, and I also say that is heat. That electrons, absolutely they're heat. You push electrons into anything it heats up, you pull them out, it gets cold. They don't even understand that. Bose-Einstein condensate is nothing more than pulling every electron out and then the energy stabilizes and there is no difference on any of... Well, let's, let's look at it. Okay, this is fully understood with electron flood theory. All this talks about Bose-Einstein condensates to distribution. They're talking about the distribution describes the statistical behavior of integer spin particles at low temperatures. All, right? all it's saying is that at the low temperatures you can have all the same, they can collect into the same energy states. 
a phenomena called condensation. All that means is you sucked out all the extra electrons, so they're all, they don't have any, any elect, extra electrons to jump around in energy states. They're all at their lowest energy state, which means they are condensate and have given off the electrons that make them into all kind of different energy levels. Simple as that. Truth is, I can go on all day about this, showing particles spin, and they're not, they are particles, they spin, and they have a mass, they have a weight, a crook's radiometer spins because the blackness absorbs the particle which has a weight, the silver side bounces it off. So obviously if it doesn't absorb it, it only has a less of an energy than the black side which absorbs it and it turns in, <laughs> the black side pushes. Literally, literally everything that I see, and even gravity, let me show you, this is just, it's amazing, and dark energy and dark matter. It's the particles coming from the sun that's just not concussing with anything on the way. Everything that illuminates sends out particles. If they are in space, there is really very little for them to interact with, so they have their own zones and just move forward or just hang out there. They don't have to go forward. The ones in our ionosphere, they're just sitting out there. They're not going anywhere. Okay, I suppose I've said it <laughs> said enough. Uh, but I'm telling you right now, we're seeing electron neutrinos. They say you can't see them. We're seeing electron showers. They say you can't see them. They're working hundreds of thousands of times bigger than particles than we're working. We started with light. We got light. We got electricity. We got electrons. We got the things that create heat. Light creates heat. No question whatsoever. 100% for certain. And anytime you force electrons, which is heat, which is light, into anything, it, those extra electrons cause energy excitation. Now, Bones, Einstein, constant state, they pull every single extra electron out, and they say, oh boy, it stabilizes. Of course it stabilizes. There's nothing to, to force anything to do anything. But I'm going to tell you right now, our atmosphere has absorbed so many electrons, I don't think it can take any more. And I think literally all of them that are coming in now, well, not all of them, but a hell of a lot of them are nothing more than heat. And that is not the normal situation. We were like a battery, but I think we hit full charge. And now, whatever comes in now is, is, is literally heat. Right? Normally, you grow plants with all these things and you do all these things. Well, the, t the, the surface is heated up, the water has heated up, the atmosphere has heated up, and it is not slowing down. It is spiking. I think it's just overcharged. Now, the only possible way I can see out of this is if we could do fusion, because every time you burn anything, you're adding more electrons. Anytime you liberate electrons, you're adding them to the atmosphere. All right, I'm going to leave it at that.